Here we are in our primary landscape level. I went ahead and created the ORD textures for all of the materials that I downloaded from Fab. One thing I forgot to mention, when you create the ORD textures, you want to set the compression settings to masks. I don't think that's something that you can automate directly from the texture graph. Once you change the compression settings, you're going to have to update the material function so that the sampler type is correct. Prior to this, it was something else. So I went through and updated the sampler type to masks on this texture sample and this one, this is our ORD section. The texture object as well is updated. And then in the material, which I've also updated with our material function, the texture objects are set to the masks sampler type. So anyway, make sure you do that. Let's go ahead and talk about the material, its new configuration, nice and neat. I created parameters for each material function the parameters all have to have unique names or it'll just use the same data for each function. Like if this was just tiling, I would change it here and it would update for all of them. So I put JR in front of this one because this one is jagged rock. And then we have rock cliffs and rock surface and so on and so forth. So you can see there's a little prefix there that indicates which material this is going to be modifying. In addition to that, if you select the parameters, you can see over here that I've put them in the group Jagged Rock. So I could call this kind of anything I want, just type it in, and it'll show up in the material parameter as that. The next thing that I did is I set the sort priority. So zero, one, and two. And what, what that's gonna do is it'll be ordered with this one first and this one second and this one third in the material instance, which we can take a look at right here. So we've got beach gravel, and then you can see there are the prefixes because everything is in the right group and then the values and for the values i just picked the defaults for what made sense in the last example that we looked at so what i'd like to do is i'm just going to create some stripes here of each material probably doesn't need to be that huge and we'll just get the tiling values and the offset set up so we'll do beach gravel and then jagged rock and you could do this in a you know, flat plane if you wanted like a kind of a new level but we're, we're already here it's not that difficult to erase it and then finally soil sand so i'm going to temporarily hop out of landscape editing mode i'm going to grab the landscape oh the other thing i did on the material sorry for jumping around, is with the material selected, I turned on tessellation. So enable tessellation. And then we've got to come over to the landscape actor itself. And we've got to turn on Nanite and build data. Okay, and we're just going to drop our character down Let's look, there's a little bit of um, a little bit of displacement. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just uh, hit, let's see, this guy. So this will basically put us into camera mode. I'm going to set the directional light to have a little bit more of an angle on it so we can get a better sense of the displacement and the shadows. Okay, and I want to actually go back over to landscape so I can be reminded if it'll let me. So the first one over here, our first stripe is beach gravel. I think beach gravel looks pretty good. And then the next one over here is going to be jagged rock, which is tiling way, way too much. So let's go ahead and bring our landscape material instance over. We're looking for jagged rock. We will update our tiling value and reduce it. That feels reasonable. Kind of want to increase the displacement intensity. It starts to get kind of noisy pretty quickly. So we, we may just sort of be locked at something close to what the default is there. But you can see there's a big difference in the tiling value. Our next one is going to be rock cliffs. Go ahead and hop out of that. So here's our rock cliffs. We'll enable that. You 
increase that tiling value a bit. And I think the displacement on this is probably okay as well. Maybe a little flat. Let's see if we can punch it up without breaking things. We'll set it to like 0.05. Sorry, that was the wrong one. Rock cliffs. That looks pretty good. I would say for something that's a little bit chunkier like this, you can, you can push it. It just starts to get noisy, and that's that's kind of one of the things you want to look out for. So there's going to be some range of values where it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's fine. You can kind of see the, the noise showing up here, but I'm not sure how close we're ever going to get to this, and I think that looks nice. But of course, now we need to kind of fix our offset. So let's just take this to 4.8, maybe 4.6. All right, so I'm not gonna make you watch me dial all of these in, because I'm sure it's kind of like watching paint dry, but this is what I'm gonna do for the other materials. So hold on for one moment. I'm gonna take care of that and uh, jump back in. So here's where we landed. I noticed with this material, the ORD map was tiling a few times. I'm not sure how that happened, but I just regenerated the texture and cleaned it up and it looks better now. Here are these other rocks and that second sand. So one of the challenges here with the materials that I've chosen is the values between these two rocks are fairly similar and this sand and this, this rock over here are also fairly similar. There are a few options. You could always just grab different materials from Fab. You could go into Photoshop and tweak the values or you could add some controls for that directly in the material. But the aggregate effect is because everything was so blurry and the values are so similar, we're not getting a great amount of breakup here on our landscape, which is kind of the point of the whole thing. So I went back in and I regenerated these masks, these layer masks with a lower blur value. So now there's a little bit more separation between the blacks and the whites. This may have an impact. We can, we can just do a quick test. I'm not really anticipating a huge difference, but it's easy enough to give it a shot. So we'll go to manage, import, plug all these in. All right, let's head over to paint. So here we're starting to get a little bit more breakup. Let's fix the, uh, the directional light here. So it's a foundation that you would then go, that's interesting, that you would then go through and continue working on. This is probably as good a place to start as any, right? And obviously if you changed the data coming out of Gaia or the materials, you may or may not get a better result. But anyway, again, this is just a, a procedural landscape generating process using Gaia and Unreal and layered landscapes and texture graph and some handy and not all too complicated material stuff. Hopefully you found it to be useful. Thank you so much for watching.